We'll start this presentation of our proof of concept with the asset properties page. This information is extracted during the ingest process by our semantic workers that use not only the file metadata, but also by analyzing production information from production tracker, asset management system, TD scripts, file paths, and so on. There is no difference between a production file live on hard drives and an archive. In our tool, they can be browsed and enriched exactly the same way. To browse the archives and content, we have an intuitive graphical interface where we can easily preview, select, and filter the asset by type. On a daily basis, artists look for objects, textures, effects, animations they can drop in their scene to speed up the creative process. Here they can browse the assets from the disk and archives from previous projects with an easy-to-use search engine, natural language enabled by our semantic technology. The archive can be enriched by adding and linking new assets directly within the same interface. For all scenes, we can have previews and different renders attached. We also have a full write management system, as we'll see later. All assets are always kept in sync through the parent-child relationship. For example, I can browse all the textures used inside that scene and all the models. Internally, to organize the relationships, we built a specific ontology to match CG production needs. It can then connect to industry standards such as UBU Core or the Movie Labs Media Ontology. In the future, those links could be directly imported using formats such as USD, Universal Scene Descriptor. It is also possible to manually link assets. For example, I can add a texture to this clock. In that case, the texture has a right issue. The font has not been licensed. Since it's connected to its parent, the right issue will automatically propagate to the clock and to the scene. The relationship goes both ways, so it is easy to find at the scene level or at the object level where the right issue comes from. In that example, the clock, the scene, all the renders and all assets depending on the clock texture automatically show there is a right issue in their properties because dependencies are maintained at all time. We can gather information from external systems, for example, artist names in a production tracker. In that example, we show that the names of all artists having created different assets in the scenes are automatically retrieved at the scene level. This information is also propagated automatically at the render level. We are using a high-level semantic data model that can connect all information from all connected systems. In that example, the name of the author was automatically found in a linked open data. A very complex aspect of archiving CG and VFX assets is a technical production environment. We can connect the data to a deployment system or TD scripts to know exactly what version of softwares and plugins have been used to generate the asset. As we generally say in the preservation ecosystem, if you can't open it, it's not preserved. We can configure scripts to automatically generate thumbnails and previews during the ingest process to make the browsing easier. Filters allow to easily solve the assets during the search. Custom filters can be created and organized to match the different requirements of artists, TDs, and data managers. Subcategories are automatically generated out of the metadata stream. Combining and organizing the information coming from all sources available thanks to semantic technologies allows to easily retrieve unorganized content. The artist or data manager can pick assets and add them to the basket to be pushed to the digital creation tool or to create another archive to send with all its properties to another vendor.